I wish the rest of the entire American population could see them in action, see their level of integrity. That started me thinking about what could I do. You know, Veterans Day to me has turned into a mattress sale. Let's turn it back to what it's supposed to be. Every now and then it's worth remembering that some things are more valuable than money. Something I only admit once or twice a year. But tonight's Veterans Day show was one of those moments. That's why I like to celebrate the companies that are doing the most to help our veterans. Companies like Starbucks, the global coffee and tea powerhouse, which among other things is committed to hiring at least 10,000 vets by the end of 2018. Plus, Starbucks is also partnering with a host of nonprofits that help veterans like Team Red, White, and Blue, Team Rubicon, and the mission continues. On top of that, the company has rolled out dozens of military family stores that are operated primarily by veterans or their spouses of service members, and that also work with local organizations to provide services to veterans and their families. Howard's too modest, so I'll say it myself. This man's family foundation has committed $30 million to help veterans manage the challenges of successfully transitioning into the civilian workforce. So let's take a closer look with Howard Schultz, chairman and CEO of Starbucks, hear more about these efforts and also get his take on the future of look, his company, the world, the election, whatever. Mr. Schultz, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank Good you, to see you, Howard. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much for that nice introduction. Oh, of course. Now, Howard, I heard you talk about these fabulous men and women deserving of respect, but also deserving of opportunity. Yes. And you are giving both. Well, I have to just tell you the quick story, and that sure. is Secretary Gates joined Starbucks board about four years ago. And when he came on the Starbucks board, he began to educate our entire company that over a million extraordinary young men and women were coming home from Afghanistan and Iraq. And they were coming home without not only a parade, but an understanding of the American people, because most Americans did not have much skin in the game with regard to the war. So we really began to understand what could we do as a company. So we've hired thousands of veterans and or their spouses. I want to say something that's you know, really important. Their level of integrity, work ethic, leadership skills is beyond reproach, but also on a cultural basis, which is so important to a company. When Starbucks people are working alongside a veteran, their level of pride in what the company stands for. And I think we've now opened up stores that are veteran-based. They have an apron that says they're a veteran. And I think what we've tried to do is raise the national awareness and discourse about what it is to serve the country. And two years ago, we had this extraordinary HBO Starbucks special where 800,000 people came to the National Mall. And all we tried to do once again was elevate the national conversation. What I would say is simply, we should not be acknowledging veterans who have served the country only on Veterans Day. We should be doing it every single day. We owe them a great, great debt of gratitude. We owe them, and we are entitled or feel entitled, but not for anything that we necessarily do. Exactly right. And I think every time you, you sit down with somebody who has served, you realize there's no sense of entitlement whatsoever. And I'll tell you one very brief story. We were in a focus group with veterans who were leaving the service. And I heard, heard a young man say something I will never forget. He said he had more anxiety about going to a job interview than he had going back to Afghanistan, because he had no training no resources, no tools. And when you hear something like that, you realize we must step in and provide transitional trainings, transitional tools, and give people the opportunity to enter the workforce in a way that is a smooth transition for them. You are talking about something that's really a partnership, not just between the men and women in the armed services and business, but maybe a partnership that's with a nation. And we're at a time where we just finished a very divisive election. And when I hear what you're saying, I'm gonna, and your heartfelt uh, mention both to the troops and to people and to veterans, what I think is is that you're trying to say, listen, maybe business can help, and maybe business shouldn't be vilified because you're playing a role too. Well, what I would say is this: is that uh, business today, for one reason or another, has gotten a bad rap, and and there are bad actors. Let, let's let's admit it. No. But business is not evil. And we have an opportunity as a business and business leaders to contribute greatly to our society by hiring great young men and women, by creating vendor opportunities. We just opened a store in Ferguson, Missouri, after a year of what went, went, went on there. And people said, Ferguson, how could you possibly go there? That store is doing so well, and you should see the community. It's a beacon of hope. 
And we, we can provide that kind of opportunity across the nation. All right, so there are veterans watching the show right now. Yes. And uh, we both want them to work at Starbucks. We do. So what do we do? How do we make yes. that happen? What do we tell, tell them right yes. now? Yes. Well, one, one thing we've learned is that we, what we need inside Starbucks in the HR group is we need veterans recruiting veterans okay. who understand their language, their challenges, their issues. So the people who are recruiting veterans at Starbucks are people who have won the cloth of the nation. But there are thousands of opportunities today to work in Starbucks stores, to come in, to get trained, to work in our office, to work in our management team, to work in our supply chain. And what we've learned is that the level of attrition rate among veterans is lower, the le level of, of performance is higher, and these are great, great young men and women. So uh, tell me where we are. Uh, you. Yes. It's a difficult moment in the country, and it's also today we've seen, and yesterday, a kind of a magnanimous gesture of coming together. Uh, you are a optimist and also a skeptic. How does it make you feel right now? I think the country has gone through an incredible crucible. Right. And uh, I think we're all, uh, the fact that it's over, uh, whether we like the result or not, I think the president uh, and Hillary Clinton did a wonderful job of demonstrating real humility and recognizing that we need to support President-elect Trump. And as a nation, we need to come together. So I am optimistic, uh, but we have a lot of work to do. And my concern right now is to ensure the fact that there is a lot less divisiveness and vitriolic behavior, and there's a level of sincerity and people coming together with compassion and empathy for everyone. You and I have spoken for a long time about the notion of the ambassadorship of Starbucks. Yes. I've said to you at one time that perhaps whole, uh, com uh, whole conflicts could have been avoided had American business through Starbucks, had Starbucks throughout the world. What is the, what is the feeling in a Vietnam? What is the yeah. feeling in a China? In, in sworn opponents in, right. within our own lives. I, I, I wish everyone could come with me on a trip. We just came back from China and Japan and see what's going on. I think the thing that we've learned, the bottom line is, there are significant differences that we have all over the world, language, politics, religion, culture, all of these things. But we all basically want the same thing, and it's universal. We want to be respected, we want to be dignified, and we want a better life for our children. And as a company, if you can reach out and demonstrate truth and authenticity and be values-based, you're going to be embraced all over the world. And that's what happens. That is what happens to Starbucks. Well, you've exported a remarkable concept, and you have done an amazing job for shareholders. But I have to ask you, are our troops our best export? I think uh, there's no better export when you see a young man, man and woman in uniform representing the United States of America. And I've had the great privilege of going to, I said Okinawa, uh, I've been to Kuwait, uh, I, I've been to a number of places, and everyone I've ever met makes you proud to be an American. Well, we're proud to have you on Mad Money, and thank you for everything that you're doing for service people, for veterans, and for the country. That's Howard Schultz, chairman and CEO of Starbucks. Mad Money's back after the break. Thanks. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.